Hey everyone, Sharkard here, and in this video I want to go over how to build your account the most effective and efficient way to get the most powerful bonuses you can right from the start. I've recently been playing with a lot of people, even AR50+, plus, and they still tell me that they feel like they're really weak. And the reason for this is that somewhere along the way, they probably didn't build their characters or their account properly. So let's talk about that. If you've seen my Start Strong guide, you know that the number one most important thing to realize is that this game is about resource management. And if you can manage your resources well, you're going to have a good time. And if you don't, things are going to be a little challenging for you. Genshin can definitely be confusing, and they don't really give you a whole lot of information and just kind of leave you to your own devices. And without any knowledge of what you're doing, you can definitely run into a lot of roadblocks. With this in mind, I want to teach you how to build your characters and account in the best way possible in a step-by-step -step fashion. This will be really helpful if you're starting out, as I'll be going through each adventure rank and telling you what you should focus on. But even if you're a higher adventure rank, it will show you the damage increases you will get by prioritizing building certain things instead of others. So I believe this video will be really helpful for everyone. So let's start with the basics. Generally, there's a few mistakes I see people make. The first is trying to build multiple characters at the same time. Your resources will be way too depleted if you build multiple characters at once, so just focus on one character, especially at the start. Secondly, if you're just starting out, you'll want to build a main DPS character and have them carry you through most of the game. Remember, we're only building one character at the start, so pick whoever you like the best. If you don't know which characters are suitable as main DPS, I'll put some on the screen right now. That way you can pick the character you like the most to level and focus on. Now, these characters may not all be suitable main DPS characters later in the game, they might be better in a sub DPS role, but at lower adventure ranks, you can choose among any of them and just pick your favorite and they will carry you through most of the game. Another mistake I see people make very often is using the wrong priority system when building a character. People will usually raise a character's level first, and really that's the last thing that you want to do. It's weird, I know. In other games you want to raise a character's level first to make them stronger, but character level is not a priority on just about every character in the game. There's a few exceptions, but there's other priorities that you want to focus on. And generally, this is the order you want to prioritize when building a character. First, weapon level. Second, talent level, third, artifacts, fourth, character level. Now if you're wondering how to build a specific character, I made a video of how to build every character in the game as a version 2.6. This video also has timestamps so you can easily find the character you're looking to build. And a link to that video showing how to build each character will be in the video description as well. The reason we have the order priority as a weapon, talent, artifact, and character level is because it's the most resin efficient way to build a character, meaning it not only gets you the fastest results, but also the most significant boost and at the least cost per resin spent. So now that you've picked your main DPS character that you want to level and have a general understanding of build priority, let's go into what you need to do at each adventure rank step by step. The first part of building your account will take place from Adventure Ranks 0 through Adventure Rank 15. While in this first phase, the thing you want to focus on first is leveling up the weapon for your main DPS to level 20. This is about a 123% damage increase over a level 1 weapon. After you level your weapon, you'd normally level your talents next, but we're not going to do that here, we're going to do something different for the very first part. We want to get your artifact, specifically your feather, to plus 4. Your feather will give you flat attack, and when we get it to plus 4, it will give you quite a boost in damage, especially at the lower levels. Now flat attack is not as important or is not as needed in higher levels, but at lower levels it's really, really strong. Look for any 3 star feather with either attack percent, crit rate, crit damage, or energy recharge. Then just use white or green artifacts to get this feather to plus 4, which is about a 40% damage increase. Now it's important to note that you shouldn't really be hung up on artifacts, especially early in the game. You don't really care about artifacts until later, AR35, and then AR40 and 45 is really when you want to start focusing on, on them, but for the time being, just get the best artifact you can. So if you don't have a blue artifact or blue feather, then you can use a green one for the time being. 
but if you have a blue feather and it has bad substats, it's better to use that over a green artifact that has good substats because the blue one will have a higher base stat total. Again, don't worry too much about this because you're going to be replacing these anyways and you're really not going to get any good artifacts until AR40+. The next thing you want to do is level a character to level 19. This is about a 28% damage increase, which as you can see is significantly less than leveling your weapon, which is a 123% damage increase, or getting a feather to plus 4, which is about a 40% damage increase. The reason we get your character to level 19 and not 20 is because at level 20, they will not gain any more experience until you ascend them, and you're not able to ascend them until you reach the next world level. So we get them to level 19 so they can continue to gain experience, and then you have to use less books to level them up to level 20 once you reach the next world level, but you can do that very quickly once you reach the next world level, and then quickly ascend them from level 20, unlocking level cap from level 20 to 40. Once you've gotten your main DPS's weapon and feather to plus 4 and also to level 19, you can work on other supporting characters for your team as well. At this stage, it's not super resource intensive and you do have a pretty good amount of resources at the beginning of the game, so if you want to do this, it's definitely not a bad idea. Now this next step is optional, but if you do have extra resources, you can take any offensive artifacts to plus 4. Offensive artifacts are headpieces that have crit rate or crit damage as a main stat, or attack percent as a main stat, as well as sands of time that have attack percent. Once you've reached adventure rank 15, it's time to ascend your world level and take your characters from level 19 to 20, and then ascend them, making their level cap 40. The next phase of leveling is the adventure rank 16 through 24 range. Your first priority will be getting a weapon up to level 40, this is about a 51% damage increase, and it should only cost about 20 resin to get it from level 20 to level 40. And again, we're going to do things a little bit differently here because we're going to get our character up to level 39. This is about a 19% damage increase. Normally we'd level our talents, but we want to get our character level up to 40 first. The next thing we want to do is get a 3 star feather and get it to plus 8. This is about a 6% damage increase. And then we want to get other artifacts of the 3 star variety to plus 8 as well. If they're offensive, it's about an 8% damage increase there. And you can follow these steps for most of the characters on your team as well. Again, you generally only want to be building one character as a main DPS, but if you have other characters that support your DPS and are bringing more damage to the table, then it's fine to level them as well. The next big milestone we hit is world level 2, and this will be from the adventure rank 25 to 29 range. Between adventure ranks 25 and 29, you want to level the weapon on your main DPS to level 50. This will be about a 42% damage increase, and cost roughly about 40 resin to complete. Now if by this point you found a 4 star feather, you want to upgrade that to plus 8. This will be a 6% damage increase over the plus 8's blue feather, or 3 star feather, that you've been using thus far. But if you haven't found a 4 star feather yet, then you can skip this step. The next thing to do is to ascend your main DPS to their character ascension 2, or A2. This is only about a 2% damage increase, but you'll need this to level your talents later, so it's important to ascend your characters immediately. After you ascend your character, you want to increase their talents to level 2 but these are only talents that will increase their damage. So for most damage dealing characters, that would be their auto attacks, elemental skill, and elemental burst, but for some characters, you don't need to level their auto attacks. So if you're wondering the talent priority of a specific character, you can check the video in the video description, which will give you a priority system for which talent to level first, second, and third. Once you have your character's specific talents up, it's time to get your character up to level 49. This is about a 7% damage increase. But you'll start to notice that it's going to take a lot more experience books to do this, and thus you may need to farm some ley lines. Whenever you're not farming for weapon upgrade materials or talent upgrade materials, it's a good idea to use your resin on ley lines, either for character experience books or for Mora. Both are good options. Once you've done this and reach Adventure Rank 30, it's time to ascend to World Level 3. These next steps will encompass Adventure Ranks 30 through 34, and at this point you'll really want to be honing in on that singular main DPS and funneling your resources to them first. 
your resources will also start to become more scarce, so I would recommend saving them, focusing on the main DPS character all the way through. And once you've maxed out your main DPS and have plenty of resources to take them into the next phase, then you can start to build your supporting characters a little bit. So the priority for this round is to get your weapon to 60, no surprise there. This will give you about a 15% damage increase from where you're at currently, and it will cost roughly 40 resin to get it from 50 to 60. Next, you want to ascend your character to their Ascension 3, which will give you about a 5% damage increase and cost roughly 60 resin. The third thing you want to do is level your talents up to level 4. You just unlocked their character's Ascension 3, so now you can level your talents up to 4. Again, focus on the talents that do the most damage, and this gives you about a 16% increase in total damage. At this stage, it'll probably cost about 100 resin to level your talents from 2 to 4. Finally, you want to be using some artifacts at this point. Look for 4 star artifacts and get them to plus 12. A set of 4 star artifacts at plus 12 will give you about a 13% damage increase. And again, you want to focus on your feather first, and then offensive artifacts like an attack or crit rate or crit damage headpiece, and an attack sands. An elemental damage goblet or a physical damage goblet would be nice, but you can also just run an attack goblet as that is perfectly fine too. Finally, you want to get your main DPS character up to level 59. Once you've done this, it's a good idea to start saving your resources and not leveling up other characters unless you have plenty, because this next round is the wall that a lot of people hit. This next phase is world level 4, and this will encompass adventure ranks 35 through 39. Things start to get a little bit tougher here, and they require a lot more resources than they did before, and suddenly you might find that you're running low on Mora, Enhancement Ore, Artifacts, all sorts of things. But if you've been following the guide to this point, you should be sitting pretty nicely. And if you continue to follow these steps, you'll have plenty of resources to level up your characters and not be stuck in a rut where your characters feel like they're doing no damage. So in this phase, the first thing you're going to want to do is level your weapon up to level 70. This will be about a 12% damage increase and cost roughly 60 resin or so. Next, you're going to want to get your character ascension up to 4. This is only like a 1.5% damage increase, but it's important for getting your talent levels up. Ascending your character will cost roughly 80 resin or so. Now, once they're ascended, the next priority is to get your talents to level 6. This will give you about a 12% damage increase, but it will cost about 240 resin. So that gives you roughly the same damage increase as leveling your weapon to 70, but it costs about 4 times as much. After getting your talents up to level 6, then you want to get your 4 star feather to plus 16. This will be about a 4% damage increase for you. And then, finally, you want to get your character up to level 69. This is about a 5% damage increase, but it's going to cost roughly 300 resin to get there, so again, not that efficient. Now at this point, you may still have a lot of quests available and can continue to push your adventure rank even higher. But what you may want to do instead is level up your support characters. And the reason you may want to do this is because once you're in the adventure rank 35 through 39 range, you have access to just about everything in the game. You should be able to go to all the regions, and you'll be at a high enough adventure rank to do all the special events as well. So if you want, you can continue pushing your adventure rank as fast as possible, or you can take some time here and build up your supporting characters. Either is fine. However, if you do decide to stay and level your characters here, you can level your three other supporting characters on your team, take them to level 60, ascend them, and then keep them there for the rest of your time until you really want to level them to max later. So this might be a good choice for many players as they can build their team and make them a lot stronger than what they are currently, but once they get past this point, they won't need to level them until they're basically at the highest adventure rank and world level. So if you want to take that route to build your team up, then do the same things you would do with your main DPS. Get their weapons to level 70, get them to their Ascension 4 and unlock their final Ascension passive, then get their talents to level 6, get their plumes to plus 16 if they are damage dealing sub DPS, and you can keep their level at 60. And if you choose to go this route of leveling up your team and taking a little bit more time to make your overall count stronger, then 
From the next point on, you can focus all of your resources into your main DPS. Because at this point, you won't need to level your characters past level 60 or Ascension 4 because they'll already have their talents at level 6 and a weapon that's good enough to get by through the rest of the game. After Adventuring 39 is when we can ascend to world level 5. This is where our characters start to become really powerful, and this range will encompass Adventure Rank 40 through 44. Here we want to level our main DPS's weapon to level 80. This will be about a 10% damage increase and cost roughly 80 resin to do. Next, we want to replace all of our 3-star artifacts that were plus 12 with 4-star artifacts and get them to plus 16. This will be about a 14% damage increase. And remember, we want to look for offensive artifacts for our main DPS, so crit rate, crit damage, or attack percent on the circlet, physical or elemental damage on the goblet, or attack percent if you can't find that, as well as an attack percent sands. At this point, you can also be a little more picky about substats, looking for crit rate, attack percent, energy recharge, crit damage, elemental mastery, or those types of stats. But again, you don't need to look for the god rolled artifacts because you're going to be replacing these artifacts again. Once you've got your artifacts up to 16, you'll want to ascend your character to their Ascension 5. This is only going to increase their damage by about 4%, and it's going to cost about 120 resin, but it's going to be important for getting those final talent levels later in the game. Finally, you'll want to get your character up to level 79. This will be about a 5% damage increase, but it's going to cost about 320 resin or so to get there. And again, just to drive the point home, getting a weapon to level 80 is about a 10 to 11% damage increase, and it costs about 80 resin, whereas getting a character to level 80 is about a 5% damage increase, and it costs about 320 resin to do. So getting your weapon to the current max level gives you twice as much of a damage increase and costs four times less. Now once you've built your main DPS, if you haven't built your other team to level 60 and got them to Ascension 4 and gotten their talents up to level 6, this is where I would do that. At this point you've probably noticed that monsters are a lot tougher and things hit a lot harder. So you want to make sure that you can also hit hard and not slog through content because your characters are too weak. So if you haven't already, get your support DPS characters weapons up to level 70, ascend them to Ascension 4, get their talents to level 6, and make sure that they have plus 16 4 star artifacts. And again, just as a little side note, but once you ascend them to Ascension 4, you don't need to level them past level 60, you can just keep them at level 60. Finally, we're nearing the end at world level 6, which will unlock at Adventure Rank 45. This is the penultimate step in the build guide, and it will encompass Adventure Ranks 45 through 49. In the early stages of the game, you are flying through the Adventure Ranks, but this stage will take significantly more time to get through. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, because leveling up your talents, weapon, materials, and so forth will also take a lot longer. Now an interesting thing about this phase is we can't actually level our weapons up to 90, the maximum level, until the next world level, so if we could level our weapon up, that's where we do it, but since we can't at this level, we're going to focus on talents. So getting your main DPS talents up to level 8 will be your first priority. Getting your main DPS talents to level 8 is about a 14% damage increase and will cost about 360 resin, which is about 48 hours worth of resin. However, getting your talents up to level 8 will give you a guaranteed increase in damage. The other things we're doing here will give you an increase in damage as well, but it's not guaranteed. After getting your talents to level 8, the next thing you'll want to do is get a 5 star feather and replace the artifact that you're currently using. You can just take the 4 star plus 16 artifact you've been using, roll it directly into the 5 star feather, and that way you can increase that level quite a bit without having to spend a whole lot of resources to level up another artifact. You'll want to get this 5 star feather to plus 20 as it's about a 5% damage increase but it's also probably going to cost about 100 resin to do so. And now that we're world level 6 and adventure rank 45, this is where the bulk of your resin is going to be spent, but it's going to be the third priority on the list. Again, your first two priorities are getting your talents to level 8 on your main DPS, your second priority, getting your feather up to plus 20 and making sure it's a 5 star artifact, and then the third priority, which is actually the biggest increase in damage, 
but the most variable one and the most RNG dependent as well. And this is to start replacing all the 4-star artifacts you have with 5-star artifacts. Now that you're world level 6, you can guarantee one 5-star artifact from every artifact domain you do. Initially, when you start farming 5-star artifacts at Adventure Rank 45, you want to look for the main stat that you desire, like crit rate or crit damage on the headpiece, attack percent on the sands, elemental or physical damage on the goblet, and then maybe one or two desirable substats like attack percent, energy recharge, crit rate or crit damage, and so forth. You're not looking for the god rolled artifact pieces yet, you're just trying to replace every artifact you have with 5 star artifacts. Once you have some usable 5 star artifacts, you'll want to get those to plus 16. Another tip is unless you're doing a really high value artifact domain like the Emblem of the Severed Fate or Blizzard Strayer, you want to go with artifacts that give you the best combination of main stats and substats. In other words, don't worry about the set effect at this point because trust me, you will be farming artifacts a lot. And your main goal right now is just to get a usable, workable set of 5 star artifacts that give you the best substats overall. A good 5 star artifact set can give you a 25% damage increase but the amount of resin that can take can literally be infinite. So just get usable and workable artifacts for your main DPS and then for your supporting characters. Once they have something that works, you can then go back to farming ley lines for Mora or character experience books or any weapon enhancement materials or talent level up materials you want to get as well. And once you've reached level 50, it's time for the final part of this guide and the second to last world level Level 7. Level 7 encompasses Adventure Ranks 50 plus, and this will take you a long time to achieve, but once you're here, you can finally level your characters up to max. So, the first thing you'll want to do is level your weapon to 90. This is about a 10% damage increase and will cost about 140 resin, but you'll finally have a max level weapon. After this, you want to take any artifacts that you don't have at plus 20 and get them to plus 20. This is about a 6% damage increase and it will cost between 6 and 700 resin depending on your luck with the artifacts. And those are your only two priorities for your main DPS. Now at this point you can do a couple of things. You can either continue to farm artifacts for your other characters which could potentially give you a better damage bump but you are at the mercy of RNG and when you, need, when you need to build artifacts for four characters, that can be pretty tough. Alternatively, if you want guaranteed damage, you can take the characters that you currently have at level 60 and get them to level 80. Just like with our main DPS, you want to level up their weapons first, then you want to get their ascension to the maximum, then you want to get their talents up, and then finally their level. At this point, you should be able to clear just about everything in the game, but there are still more things to upgrade. So if you want to continue upgrading, the priority I would place would be getting your character Ascension up to Ascension level 6. It's about a 3% damage increase, and it'll cost about 320 resin. But when you do that, you can also get your talents up to level 9 and 10. Getting your talents up to level 9 is only about a 6% damage increase, but it's going to cost 400 to 500 resin to get there, and to get your talents from level 9 to 10 is also about a 6% damage increase. It will cost a ton of mora and resin, and it will also cost a crown of insight, which is only awarded from completing special events. So typically it's not worth crowning a character or getting their talents from level 9 to 10, unless you really really like the character. And if you really want to, you can also get your main DPS character to level 90. This will cost about 600 resin, and it's only about a 4% damage increase, but if you have nothing else to do, you might as well get them to 90. And you did it! You're now a very powerful Genshin Pro. You've gone from a level 1 dull blade to a level 90 Giga Chad. So go on ahead and smash the toughest of enemies. Now before I go, I wanted to give you one more quick tip that I think might be helpful. You see, we've talked about getting your weapons and talents and everything up, but 
those weapon domains, those talent domains, all the ascension materials that you'll need really only last three times a week. Twice during the normal week, and then once on Sunday where you can choose any one you want. So when you're not able to farm weapon ascension materials or talent materials, you want to focus on doing ley lines. This is especially helpful in the early game. You can choose to do the Mora or the Character Experience Ley Line, both are good. Just do whichever you need the most at the moment. This is especially helpful in the early game, whereas in the later game you're going to be farming more bosses for more ascension materials, so you might not have enough resin to do these on the off days. So for example, you might say that you're going to do your weekly bosses on a Monday, and then use the remaining resin you have to farm some talent ascension materials. And then on Tuesday, you might farm some weapon ascension materials. On Wednesday, you then might farm some character ascension materials. Thursday, you might farm some more weapon ascension materials because they happen twice per week. Friday, you might farm some more character ascension or talent materials. Then Saturday, you might farm some more character ascension materials or do some ley lines. And then on Sundays, the domains for all of the weapon ascension and character talent ascension open up so you can choose to do any of those. So Sunday can be your day to farm whichever ascension material you just need a little bit more of. Though again, I'd always prioritize the weapon ascension materials first. I hope this video helped you and give you some clarity on when and what to level. Genshin can definitely be confusing and they don't really give you a whole lot of information and just kind of leave you to your own devices. And without any knowledge of what you're doing, you can definitely run into a lot of roadblocks. So I hope this guide gave you a good path forward. And if you place your fins on that like and sub button, you can help me grow from a tiny minnow to a great big shark. I love you all, hope you have a wonderful day, and I can't wait to see you soon.